Hello, Fight Fans. Mike of MMA with Friends. I know I've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but man, am I excited about this fight. Ever since it was announced, Fedor Emelianenko versus Quentin Rampage Jackson, and it's finally happening. And in Japan, no, we're not going on a time warp. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. Today, we will see Quentin Rampage Jackson and Fedor Emelianenko in a co-promotion Bellator versus Ryzen in Japan. It's going to be an incredible event. Capped off by a main event. A lot of people say should have happened 10 years ago. And maybe it should have. I've seen some of you in the comments saying, Hey Mike, this should have happened 10 years ago. Never mind the combined age of these guys is 84 years old. Fedor Emelianenko is 43 years old. Quentin Rampage Jackson is 41. Let's look back I would challenge you to look back at a sport with a little longer history than UFC called boxing. And what has happened with some of the greats when they fought each other both past their prime. We have seen some of the greatest matchups, including one of, one of if not the greatest trilogy in the history of boxing, Arturo Gatti versus Mickey Ward. Past their prime, Roy Jones Jr. versus Antonio Tarver one put on an incredible show, and you that was when you really got to see Roy Jones dig down in that grit in those championship rounds when his talent was fading, but his heart was still there. Then go to Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, three incredible battles, but none of them lived up. To the Thrilla in Manila, the third fight when both of them were in the twilights of their primes. We have many examples of fighters putting on some of the greatest fights of all time in the twilights or just past their prime when they are both at the same age and the same point in their careers. So don't think that we cannot get a great fight out of this for a second. And I gotta tell you guys, I... I'm very positive about this one. I literally dreamt about this fight tonight. Last night, I dreamt that me and my friends from high school went to go see this in Japan. That's how excited I've been about this. Let's go back to Fedor Emelianenko. Uh, let's talk about his career some. Of course, the greatest MMA heavyweight of all time. One of the greatest MMA fighters of all time. The only guy that we've ever seen that could maybe knock him off the pedestal for heavyweight is if John Jones did it heavyweight. What he has done at light heavyweight, and even if he does, he's still always going to have that PED uh, clouding his legacy, uh, those positive tests and all those allegations. Um, but Fedor Emelianenko in 2012, he knocked out former UFC champion Pedro Hizo in Russia in front of the president Vladimir Putin in front of all of his friends, his family, and he had a great farewell fight, and we thought that is it. The farewell tour is done. Well, it was not. Uh, he took a quick pit stop in a place called Ryzen, then ended up over in Bellator, and since coming back in 2015, uh, he is 4-2 with three knockouts. Um Every single one of his knockouts has been in the first round. He's got three first-round knockouts. He's also been on the wrong side of two first-round knockouts. Uh, that from Matt Mitrion back in 2017, and then most recently against Ryan Bader in the finals of the Bellator Grand Prix Championships. Like opponent, recent like opponent, Chel Sonnen. Uh, Fedor Emelianenko, man, it was like he pushed back the clock when he entered this tournament. He waxed Frank Mir in 48 seconds, a fight that we had also been looking forward to. It was exciting for all 48 seconds, and I thought Fedor had retired Frank Mir, as many others did. Uh, Frank Mir has came back since then. Uh, but then the like opponent, he did retire. The American gangster, Chell Sonnen, um, took four minutes and 46 seconds to dispatch of Chell Sonnen, and it was never a match. It was never close. The American gangster 
put his heart and soul out there, but he was just completely overmatched against uh, the great Russian. So, like opponents, like I talked about, Rampage's match against Chel Sonnen went the other way. Uh, and that was just in 2018. Chel Sonnen out-wrestled um, Rampage, won a unanimous decision. Rampage, since, has rebounded with a devastating second-round knockout of his nemesis from all the way back in the Pride days, Vanderlei Silva. Uh, he's had a pretty good record uh, since going over to Bellator, though. Six and two. That is pretty incredible. Back-to-back -back losses before his last fight. Um, unanimous decision losses to Mo Law and Chel Sonnen. Uh, both wrestling fights. We know Rampage has complained in the past about people taking him down and wrestling him. Uh, he actually went one and one against Mo Law. So there's only one fighter since he went to Bellator. Uh, that he's fought that he hasn't defeated. Will Fedor Emelianenko take Quentin Rampage Jackson down? History says no. The last time Fedor went to the ground, it was against a hurt Fabricio Verdum. Uh, many of you may remember he was flurrying. Uh, Fabricio was very hurt, and Fabricio pulled him in in that first round and submitted him with an arm bar. A huge mistake by Fedor Emelianenko. Uh, which would send him on the first three-fight skid of his career and actually put Fabricio Verdum's name into, uh, you know, the list of names of greatest heavyweights of all time. Of course, he went on after that uh, to win the UFC heavyweight champion and fight uh, many great fighters after that. What will happen when these two guys fight each other, though? Both of them still seem to have their power. Both of them have been knocking guys out. Both of them have been finishing guys. Um, you know, Rampage's Achille is wrestling. Could Fedor possibly take him down and wrestle him? He could. Uh, Quentin has those slams. He does have some wrestling. He does have some takedown defense. I mean, he's been doing this forever. It's not like these guys don't have all... The tricks in the book. He just doesn't like to deal with the wrestling. And lately he has not dealt with it well. I don't see Fedor trying to take this to the ground like that though. I see him coming right at Quentin Rampage. Not taking a step back. And launching bombs. And that could be the undoing of Fedor Emelianenko. And that is probably what the odds makers were thinking. When they first made the odds for this fight. They put Quentin Rampage Jackson as a minus 290 favorite. Now, many times the fans know more than the odds makers. And uh, from whatever they've learned or whatever they think, people putting in bets uh, have closed up the odds and made them closer to even on many fights. Um, I struggle to remember a time when I've seen the odds swing so violently, though. Rampage Jackson coming in at a minus 290 to the last time I checked. Just a minus 105 favorite. This fight is now a pick -em. This is an even money fight from a 3-1 to one odds to a pick -em fight. Uh, do gamblers know something that the odds makers don't? The only thing I know is that I am expecting a war. I am expecting a battle. I am expecting us to go back in time to the times of pride. I am so excited about the buildup of this. I cannot wait to do this event tonight. I think we are going to see an epic throwback into Japan. Both of these fighters love fighting in Japan. Fedor said he would like to retire there. Quentin Rampage Jackson would ask said he would love if he fought the rest of his career only in Japan. On today, the day that the founder of Marvel, Stan Lee, would have celebrated his 97th birthday, the two fighters that maybe the most animations have been made in Japan, a country that reveres martial artists uh, as more than just humans, as superheroes, as almost godlike creatures. I feel that it is fitting. I feel like all the stars are aligning. It is the 97th birthday of Stan Lee. It's Fedor Emelianenko. It's Quentin Rampage Jackson. 
It's Bellator and Ryzen joining forces together for what I believe is going to be an incredible event, and you don't want to miss it. If anything, I'm going to make it exciting no matter what. So I cannot wait to see you guys tonight. And for those of you that don't have the zone, kaboom. This is also going to be on the Paramount Network. So if you have cable, Paramount Network and the zone tonight. This is too big of a card to miss. We also have the return of champion Michael Chandler. We have the return of MVP Michael Venom Page. Lorenz Larkin will be in action, and we are going to have some Bellator versus Ryzen matchups. Uh, this, this is going to be so exciting, guys. Merry late Christmas. Uh, this is the Christmas present for MMA and fight fans. As always, I love you. I respect you, and I'll see your fine asses at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. Eastern.